and so are we. And around the globe, everybody else watching, we're going to be loading into the draft here. Into a best of five. It's game number one already. Bands coming out. RQ going to be on the blue side. We got Echo on the red. The Cho and Fredrin band actually coming out from RQ to kick it off. Echo taking out the Wan Wan and the Joy. It looks like they're already taking out standard trademark picks coming in from Echo immediately. Yeah. The Fredrin just really consistent on the wall. Yaoi just excellently performs and consistently as well on a Cho. Cho. And then we look back at Echo immediately. Wan Wan, they get rid of the Joy. I'm not too surprised if it's going to be Yeve or even Carrie. Yeah. And the, the Joy is has been RQ's bread and butter. Especially when they went up against Falcon, when they want to prioritize, prioritize that hero as much as possible. They also pick it up in multiple roles. And that is very true with how RQ perform against uh, Onyx Esports as well. So I will not be surprised if both Fred Green, Cho, and um, Joy will be constantly banned all throughout the series. With that, with that blip ban coming out in blue, I was actually surprised by it because I was thinking maybe RQ wants to prioritize that. We saw R7 do very similar things on the glue like he did with the Joy. But now this leaves yeah. a lot still here up Eve. for grabs. Eve, like you mentioned, yeah. is still open. A uh, lot of, I mean, even the carry is taken out here. There it is, right? Now, Eve is locked in, but real quick, let's take wow. a look at this quote from R7. I hope Indonesia is in the upper and lower. Unfortunately, yeah. we meet in the lower. Hopefully, one of us can make it to the final to face the Philippines, and I know a lot of people around the world are hoping yeah. for that. Honestly, I'm tired of the Filipino <laughs> dynasty that has been set since M2, and RRQ just might be that one trainer who's going to beat the Elite Four and maybe try and take out the champion uh, at the very end. This is one step away from greatness, yeah. from the point of which of no return. We're seeing the Kaja, and as well as Sanford, he's going to get his yeah. Rusong, of course. Very standard picks all across the board, but now we see the Beatrix as well as mm -hmm. the Grok, which begs the question here, are they looking to try and shut down Benny QT? Yeah, uh, absolutely. But then again, you now have a shot at Echo, right? They can pick up the marksman right now. But, uh, okay, it's the Harris. Well, instead of like picking up a hard, uh, hardcore marksman, hard carrying marksman for Benny QT, they put in the hard Harith. Although it's a hard carry still, right? If you think about it. But then again, it's a more mid tempo kind of marksman or gold laner. Which kind of tells me that this is the time where Echo will pick up a hero for Carl Teasy that will scale into the late game. Yeah, I just don't. Like, the only thing I don't like about Harith is really if you have a bad start, it's shut down for pretty much the entirety of the game, and it's so hard to get that scalability in comparison to what we've seen with Beatrix, which is so weird because going back to the group stage, she had an abysmal win rate. It was like 25, what 30 percent, but now you see teams. I, I feel like so, a, a switch has been flipped with. Beatrix uh, in particular, especially in the hands of Skylar. And going back to the key to victory for RQ, if it ain't broke, just pick yeah. Rock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't fix it. Don't bother fixing it. And I think, you know, it's really good that Echo didn't fall for the fact of, hey, you know, Rock is flexible and therefore we yeah. should expect him in a couple of these positions. They're focusing down on the main issues, which is Vin. And Vin has been having a stellar performance throughout yeah. M4 for a good amount of time. Yeah. And even RRQ giving a lot of respect to Sanji as well, banning out that Valentina, making sure that he's not going to have that many flexible options when it does come yeah. down to the dive. Which begs the question, Farmist, question mark, should they ban it out here? I, I guess because they, they, are, they are considering picking it up themselves. It's probably why they will not be uh, banning it out. I'm looking at the uh, past matches of Haruki Hoshi. They do pick it up when they have a uh, Grok. Um, they, they combo Framis and Grok to go up against something like a uh, 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 Harith or a Marksman, a hard Marksman. Curveball, what about Kadida? I love it. You know, it's <laughs> one of my personal favorites. It also looks good for the side of um, Haruki Hoshi. It fits the bill of what they want to achieve, right? It's a very Haruki-ish hero. You can also give that to Echo though, but at this kind of draft, maybe the Kadida will not be considered by Echo themselves. Like it, oh, Barrett. Okay, so Carl Tizi opting for that utility jungle route, focused on the objectives. We've seen a lot of this, right? And I, I mean, yeah. at the same time, it is still a safe hero because of the fact that you can kind of brute force your way yeah. into those objectives. You have that immune to CC for a little bit. You got the Daytona's welcome. And still, this is a lot yeah. of pickoff potential because it's highlighted with the Kaja, but still, yep. can they capitalize on those kills? Because even across the board, they're going to be fighting in the death box. They're going to have to deal with wild charges from angles that they're not expecting. And if Skylar can come online on this Beatrix like we've seen him before, it is a lot of work for Echo here. Yep. 
How about a Martis uh, for Albert, for Arkyo? She did they just have to utilize this Grok on the XP lane, get another like um, a Roamer that can help them suppress this uh, Kaja. And there's the Martis. Yeah, but we're also seeing a Lapu Lapu as well, which yeah. does mean that Vin will have access to that Croc as the support. He needs to make yeah. sure that when he's playing around Yaoi, yeah. he doesn't get caught himself. There's just go. something that he's able to do. And there we go. That's the Kadita that we Man. were expecting to see coming in from Echo. Nicely yeah. done, boys, here up yeah. at the desk. Man, um, it, it's weird to say to see that both Kaja and Kadita picked up in one team, but you know. Uh, th there's a lot of like minus one potential coming yeah. out from uh, uh, from Echo. Really, what they want to play with? Is it a double down? Right? Is it too much for having both Kadita and Kaja? We're not so sure, but we might see that. That's a great point because honestly, if you you already use the Divine Judgment, and if the rough waves are gone, you lose a lot in in both categories, right? A lot of pickoff potential, a lot of firepower, even. So yeah. you almost have to. 100% guarantee that you get that numbers yeah. advantage if you're Echo here, because if it doesn't play in your favor, then that's going to be bad news for Echo and better for RRQ here as they get ready to go. Oh, this is such a stressful game here. I can't imagine what it's going to be like. Hopefully you guys are going to be sticking around because you won't want to miss a second of this. Let's jump right into it. Into the land of dawn we go. The last chance for Indonesia to make it to the Grand Finals. And it starts now. You're going to see Finn is going to be controlling that Grok. So this is the Rome Grok. And then the Lapu Lapu will be the one to fight against the Yu Zhang. We've seen it before. The Lapu Lapu can win against the Yu Zhang. Let's see Echo with early game comp. Can they actually close this one out before RRQ scales? I personally think that they absolutely can, but it really depends on that momentum at the end of the day. What? Vin is chill. Oh, he's holding back the wave <laughs> again the se for, a su for the second round of it. Okay, interesting. Usually it's just dedicated to one lane, but now we're seeing Yaoi trying to go up to help any QT out to try and make sure that Skylar doesn't get too far ahead or at least holds that control. Yeah, I mean, you're relying a lot once again here for Skylar to just kind of pop off mid to late game. That's going to be crucial for them. And at the same time, RQ's got to avoid all those picks that Echo's going to be looking for. And if anything, the fact that you have two Petrifies to work against, you've got to really be conscious of that, right? In those lockdown moments, because, I mean, even here, Sanford going to be just fine. But again, going back to the point, especially when objectives are being contested, the angles from Sanford with the Black Dragon form and even looking out for Sanji is always something the teams going against a Kadita have to work for. It's a constant, pretty much mind game from both for both of these teams. See the focus coming out from RQ Hoshi. Make sure that the laning stage is good for your side. Even when they're not really putting a lot of effort into the gold lane, the fact that they're controlling the minion wave so that it will be in the favor of Skylar, that's already them saying we want to make sure that the laning stage is ours. All right, well, first turtle now up here. You're going to see everybody in position for this as it's crucial for their momentum. Carl Teasy gonna start it up. Yep, Black Dragon form already jumping in the back line. Is Carl Teasy in trouble as R7's already done it, but he secures it. And Lapu Lapu enjoys first blood. Albert now trying to get on out of the situation. And finally, Yaoi hits level four. Divine Registry oh. Judgment has already been connected, and they have to back off. It's a two for one trade. A massive win coming out from Echo despite them losing. If Carl Teasy, they got two kills afterwards, and then the turtle. They gave so much XP as well to Echo. That means that Echo will be in a very comfortable spot. We said the laning stage, early game should be for Echo, and that's what they are now getting. Oh, Skylar now losing his flicker as well. Purple buff under threat by Yaoi. He doesn't have his all, but Kadita on the opposite side of the map looking to make sure they hold and playing for EXP here. Oh, oh he that, just took it. That's the worst feeling in the world. Truly losing your purple buff this early on. Man. Yeah, tough situation there. I mean, you know, Yaoi, oh, Watch. Vin. Wildcharge already connected on to Benny QT. He's trying to get on out of there. Yaoi unable to punish for the time it being. Albert is there. So now the rest of Echo is going to start backing off. And a majority of Echo's numbers on the bottom side of the map. We're seeing R7 actually committing to this fight. Forcing out. Don't. Didn't see that Petrify. He's still good. Rack number one. Internal secure. But I would have. Uh, I want to say top lane. You saw Vin commit the wild charge. 
want to go for Benicuti. They didn't even force the Purify onto Benicuti because they missed that wild charge. It wasn't able to knock the hand up. Oh, the combination was clean. Samford sets it up. Sanji knocks it out of the park. And here comes Albert. Can he turn this around? Black Dragon Form and get on out of there to ensure oh, that the man. Decimate doesn't pick him off. You know you're happy when you're playing the Yu Zong and you can just do that, right? You play it a little bit dangerous, a little risky, and you just go ahead and pop the Dragon Form and fly off on the map. Works great, but at the same time, you notice Yaoi spending a lot of time here on the top side. The focus is Skylar. Vin's there to help him up, but right now, numbers advantage should be even out. Albert also getting wind of this. Just in the area, just in case. Now Turtles up here. You're gonna see both teams swing into position, and once again, does Echo secure this next objective? Well, let's find out here. Watchman comes through, but the Tunnel Walk finds it. Yaoi flickers four and finds one, instantly taken off the Utrix straight away. Skylar can't do much about it. And Albert finds one, can he change oh. it into two? Yes, he can. Benny QT with the Zamin Force gets on out there, doesn't want to be a part of that. Well, beautiful start for Echo. You saw that they were able to snag Skylar. That was one great. Um, ultimate coming up from Yaoi, then Sanji with the damage. However, Albert finding the opening. He kind of conceded the turtle control for them to take more kills. That's the reason why they have taken some gold away from Echo. And despite them losing that the turtle fight, it kind of felt like RQ is starting to feel that they can equalize this game. RQ knows that they have a disadvantage when it comes to those areas of uh, objective takes, those neutral objectives, right? Especially because you can't expect to just get Carl Teasy out of there. He's playing the Barretts for a reason. So if you can actually just stay alive, no one goes down, convert into kills, especially on, let's say, Skylar Albert, you're gonna profit big time. Hold oh, on. Oh, he doesn't land the ult. He manages to flicker out just in time there, but Sanji is in position. Do they know that he's even there? Albert, he might be in some trouble. Full combination, no, he doesn't commit to it. Sanji decides to walk oh. away. Wild Charge connects onto Benny QT. Snipe comes through, Benny QT still alive, and Yaoi making sure he has vision. Carl Tizi to back him up to ensure no dives are gonna happen, but Sanji is creeping up back into the tri brush here. Do they know? Is he going to find his connection? No, sees Albert, it's just not worth his time. Even we're seeing Benny QT just holding on to that lane and Sanford walking up mid. Warrior Patricia, it's the battle for territories now for both teams. They just want to make sure that there's no team that will have the advantage up top where the gold laners are. And this is massive focus for both teams. They know what the win conditions are. Whoever gets bet the better farm in the gold lane will have a better shot in the mid game. Well, something doesn't seem right here. Bottom side actually getting fully dove on, and that's what we want to see. R7 goes down. They command the map, and now the turtle is in full control over Echo as the reinforcements are on their way. Cartizi is playing it as slow as he can, and soon he'll have to pop the Daytona's welcome. Now he finds it once again. Clay flickers on out of there, but Sanford should be able to find the kill. It lands onto two. Albert is on his way out. Sanji gets the knock up, and Vin unable to do anything. Must walk away. You see, you see what's going on here, right? It's all angles that you have to watch out for if you're RRQ here. It's either Sanford coming from the backside, Sanji popping out of nowhere, and it's tough for RRQ to handle right now. Yep. They're trying to constantly catch their breath, but at this time, it's already falling yep. apart. You're almost 4K ahead here for Echo. Yeah. You saw, like, Yaoi in the first turtle fight. He went from the right side. This time, he went from the left side, catching RRQ off guard. But my oh my, Echo, with a wonderful um, smart, uh, smart outplay, or outwit of RQ during the turtle fight. That second turtle, they delayed the take of the uh, turtle so that they will have the advantage in the team fight. Mm -hmm. And topside already crushed as well as mid tier one. Sanford here knowing that he can disrespect the space. He has a level lead. And I think, you know, Skylar with the rest of RRQ might be in some trouble here as the rest of Echo pulls their attention and resources down to the bottom side of the map. Vin has to walk on out, but Carl TZ and as well as Yaoi start taking the space into the bottom oh. side jungle here. They have to move away. They cannot do anything about this. Oh man, you can already see it. Look at the pressure, right? I mean, knowing that Yaoi's there on that Kaja, Sanji and Sanford were waiting patiently too. They just completely press RQ off that tier one, and they're able to secure themselves some more space on the map here, Wolf. Ah, massive map control from Echo. Even Call TZ just running around 1v5. <laughs> Oh, he gets knocked up here. Full combination onto Kalti so far. He now uses the Daytona's Welcome. Decimate lands, but it doesn't matter as Sanji finds his own target into Clay. They trade one for one for now. Jungler for mid lane. Skyler's just amazing 
I mean, all throughout the day, right? You saw him perform in their series against Onyx Esports. Now he's performing once again. Despite him dying once, you saw how masterful he is with a sniper as well, dealing out the damage against Kalteezy, but definitely we said Kalteezy, way too brave. 1v5, not gonna work out for him. Well, as, honestly, as of right now, I feel like Echo, and especially when we're looking at Call TZ, now that he switched his role, he's not looking to hard carry this game. He's oh, yeah. looking to be the foundation for the rest of his team members to actually step up. And Samford Yawi is looking really good, but Sanji in particular, just the control that he has. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, at this point, Carl TZ, especially when he plays these utility type junglers, he's more of that, you know, it seems like the shot caller and just is that vision for the team for everybody else to shine here. And sometimes we see those moments even for RRQ, but right now, again, with momentum being a big thing in most of these games, Echo having control here, it's gonna be really tough for RRQ to contest this first Lord. You also got a glimpse of the item. Skylar, I think only has VOD unless he picked up a second one, but able to get the top side turret some more space, but Sanford's up there and the fight ensues. It's a 4v4, the top side, hopefully we don't see. Oh, the solo kill already connects onto Skylar. Betty QT now zoning out the rest of them. Nothing that RRQ can really do now that Sanford's coming back to make the numbers in their favor. 4v5 doesn't seem ideal, but it's sin in Instantly, we're seeing the Divine Judgment lock down one. Five members against three. Sanford now getting in front of Albert as Yaoi is disrespecting R7, trying to make something happen here. The Bravest Warrior gets locked up. Into oh! the front of Albert gets locked down, but he still manages to get on out. Salford is, Sanford is still alive, but now the back line is done for. R7 is the next to fall. A two for one trade, maybe even one oh! more. Benny QT unable to find it. What a play coming up from Carl TC, just snagging one of the members of RQ to save his teammates as well. And he even utilized the Daytona's welcome onto his support server so that they'll land the double stun. Unfortunately, Echo weren't able to kill up Albert, but they did take out the Lord, and now they're controlling the purple buff as well. Echo with the economic advantage. Well, right now, you can see that advantage, how confident it makes Echo. And even just like you said, Carl TZ walking around one versus five, he doesn't really care at this point. So, I mean, Wolf, what does RQ need to do to get back into this game? It's 5k ahead for Echo. Well, they have to concede the control, to, uh, the map control now for Echo. Just utilize uh, Albert or maybe R7 to kind of split push the waves and allow for Skylar and Clay to just farm the incoming wave. So it's going to be totally defensive now for RQ Oshi. Echo's power spike is literally right now mid game. They have to respect that. Yep, Sanford coming in. Oh. Yaoi finds the catch once again. Good wow. spatial awareness and the outer turret will fall as Echo now with a five man, five man pushing into the inhibitors against four. RRQ playing hyper defensively. Albert has to clear these waves so far. But we see on the bot side, even Carl TZ doesn't mind, proxies the wave, and that's gonna be every single outer turret. Very systematic coming out of Echo. It's gonna be difficult for RQ to defend this, especially when Yahweh's just finding all of these openings. Yahweh already has gotten a fleeting time. That means that from here on out, you're always afraid of Yahweh. Like every 30 or every minute, I yeah. mean, there's a threat of the Divine Judgment one shot. I mean, just at this point, slowly whittling down the base here of RRQ. Echo knowing that they're in full control at this point. And this is, again, referring back to the series we saw with Blackness International, this is what Echo does, right? When they have this lead, they don't let go. Oh, the wall charge connects, but Yaoi was able to get his animation off in time. And now Sanford coming in with a Black Dragon form, looking to try and get a punish here. Echo find nothing, but with the 7K lead, RRQ do not want to get in that. My goodness, if it just... The plans of RQ, it's not even working at this point. This is because of the fact that Echo does have the map control, but you, you have to uh, you have to respect that if you're RQ. Why not just farm? Echo, though, they're doing the, the lane freeze so that they force out. They're like smoking out the members of RQ, get out of their base by freezing the minion waves. Well, I mean, that's, uh, again, going back to this whole point, like you have Grok. Yes, it was a key to victory. If it ain't broke, you know, keep picking Grok. But this time, Vin hasn't been able to find the targets he, he wants to, but let's say he does. Where, what, what damage do you have to throw at Echo right now? You know, you I think Clay and Skylar both have a couple items, but it's still hard to get through that front line. And even if you do, you've got every other angle to worry about, right? And Sanji so far, 6-0-3, rocking the Petrify here. Can most likely one combo everybody from RQ, except maybe been in Albert, right? R7 is even in quite a, quite a bit of danger with this Lapu Lapu pick. So now, 
next lord up here, Echo. Oh, oh Finn. Finn, he fights two with the real one manipulation. Comes on down, they find one pick. Like you were talking about, Sanji, no time to react in time. And now our RQ are in position to maybe hit a lord here. Let's see how they play out, because Albert might be in some trouble. Yaoi is again threatening him with the Divine Retribution. Haltizi getting zoned out for now, but he's really far ahead of the team. Yaoi once again looking at Albert's positioning. Albert making sure that he doesn't get locked down for the time being. R7 looking for something against Sanford here, but the same goes for Albert. He's got to be so careful as the mid wave gets pushed in. We oh. see Skyline get locked down by Yaoi. The counter engagement. Sanford now looking to punish the back line oh. instantly. They find Skylar. No flicker for him. Albert's trying to run Vinny with a wild charge to make it out of there. And once again, the economic advantage from Echo still puts them ahead. No, I definitely agree with you, Gideon. It's just the items that allowed Echo to really just hammer to bat like a bantering ram against RQ Oshi, but also the dive potential. Even after they were able to take out Sanji, there's still Yaoi, there's still Sanford. So many heroes that can go to the back lines, and Skyler only does have one dash and one flicker. It wasn't enough to keep himself alive during that skirmish. Echo now wins the economic battle. And that's what I'm saying, right? Even if you expend all those resources from RQ to find one member of Echo, at this point in the game, it's not going to be enough. They have to figure out how to stall the game further, allow Skylar, allow Clay to get the items they need. And then those sets from Vin will result in two more. Winning those team fights, winning those even skirmishes, if they can get two down from Echo, three down maybe is much better. But as this game progresses, it's 9K ahead for Echo, and it's showing here as the Lord marches the mid. This is going to be a guaranteed inhibitor, but top side is collapsing at the same time. R7 is trying to slow it down, but now the engagement happens. And immediately, Sanford with the Black Dragon Ball, with the help of Sanford, Force the back line getting attacked by R7, but it really doesn't matter here as the Shard Residue keeps Sanford alive. Immediately, we see Skylar fall once again, and that is going to be that. Wait, hold on. Yaoi, they're trapped. Oh, no, not the they're not being there. They seem to be getting out of here they're with trapped. the barrier already down. Yeah, Benny QT jumps oh. into Sanford Force once again to finally turn this fight around. We're phasing through everybody, and R7 is just looking helplessly. R7 tries with the Bravest Warrior, but the rest of them are looking to end this game. Call TZ is walking backwards, but Sanji as well doesn't want to jump in. It's too threatening as the Divine Judgment comes on through. Knock up connects. Rough Wave's not going to be committed. Daytona's welcome. Throws him against the turn stuff. And that is going to be game Benny. number one for Echo. First blood drawn here by Echo. And again, a very strong fashion. We've seen it before in previous series. RRQ struggling to hold on in this game one. Honestly, GG well played to Echo. There yeah. is just, that was just a slow burner, yeah. but you could just feel the suffocation coming out from RRQ. You saw, the moment they got control of the early stages, the moment they got the first blood, they continued to go on. They made sure that the, the, the XP lane was also being uh, destroyed by the Sanji and Sanford combination. Double Petrify between the Yuja as well as the Kadida. They made sure that R7 will not have good amount of farm in the early stages, which kind of means that R7 will not have an influence in the mid-game, which they kind of needed. Skyler needed the farm. They weren't able to give it because the XP lane in her was also shut down. You just saw, I mean, across the board, again, the, the boxes being checked here all around from Echo. And even though it looked like there was moments where RQ could hold out a little bit longer, it was just still, it was the economy factor. I mean, what, eight, nine K gold ahead for Echo there towards the end. It was just too much for them to really deal with. And as the game transitioned, I mean, you could see a total, a total domination from the Orcas. Echo taking game number one. I think a big part of this that RQ wants to go into the next game is really not allowing all those angles of attack, right? Sanford, Sanji specifically, the Yu Zhang, the Kadida, those are very troubling heroes to deal with. So uh, they'll have to figure that out. I know the boys on the analyst stand will have more to say that. Before, before we get to that, we do want to mention that the M4 Battle Pass goes live tonight. And don't forget to check it out. There we go. Okay, this January 21st, expect loads of events and rewards up for grabs in game. First off, complete battle tasks in game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. You can choose the skin you like most from the chest, and aside from that, the battle bonus awaits you on the same day. Play matches, and you'll get team star protection for three matches. Double BP, double stars, everything else, protection points, double XP, double 
BP for five matches. We're not stopping there. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available, so save the date. That's January 21st. Let's all celebrate the M4 Championship together and with our friends, of course. I know you got the timer up there again, but... You're crushing it. You're crushing it. You're, you're shaming off like three to four seconds I every blind, single time. I blind read it. Yeah, don't worry. I got you covered. Well, we're going to throw it over to the analyst stand and see what they have to say about that game number one. Woo! Welcome back to the analyst stand. What a game one by Echo Esports. That was pure domination. Now, I want to start off from the draft, Mirko. You know, what do y'all think what do you think about what happened with our R2 draft last game? Honestly, I think it was just a great draft by Echo, right? The response from the Yi first pick instantly to Akanja Yu Zong. That back line, so much pressure, so much threat. And you could see that the Yi Beatrix combination that they used to go up against on esports that worked so well just did not have any impact this game. When you come to a level of MLBB that is what Echo is employing this time around, it all comes down to geometry, right? And with every single hero they're playing, they're playing with angles, they're playing with just concepts that on the map, if you're able to find them, you will. So you have Yaoi who just is a straight line, right? You have Benny Cutie who's kind of like a triangle when you say that the fight happens here, it's gonna happen here. And you have Sanji and Sanford who are, again, say what you will about double petrify, but it's almost an absolute, especially since, I don't know, Mirka, how do you feel about this? RRQ did not employ any Purify at all. Yeah, and I want to point out, regarding the item page right here, Sanford on the Yujon only have one damage item, the Hunter Strike. You know, other than that, it's all defense. How is he able to break away the HP from the back line? Just one shot Skylar, like nothing, a late game. Yeah, on top of that, right, I do want to answer Leo's question here with the Purifies. I think, there you go. I, I, at this point, it's like they're just gambling on the fact that they're trying to actually flicker out to safety before the Petrify hits. But when you have two Petrifies, when you have two people <laughs> that can gap closer so easily on the Yu Zong, on the Kadida, on top of that as well, Yaoi on the Kaja that is so, just so lethal, they need to put some respect down. Some Purifies in, right? Also, I think the way that they played here was a bit weird. It wasn't the RQ we saw up against Onyx Esports that waited for the power spike to hit on Skylar. They kept on fighting and fighting and fighting, and in the end, they just gave over Echo so much opportunity to actually take the snowball. You know, I think a lot of it is why the entire RQ didn't take a Purify is because the Echo has the Kaja, right? The Purify doesn't really help. And a lot of initiation come from Yaoi's Kaja as well. You can see right here, the forgotten one, Yaoi has 11 total assists, total 76% kill participation. Leo, why don't you go ahead and walk us through some of the combos that Echo had the last game? Yep, so there's at least two sure fire ways to cut right through RRQ's lineup, right? You have the Kadita combo, and then you have the Black Dragon Forum combo off of Sanford, which again, I think saw one or two one-on-one -on -one kills across the map, right, in the 16-minute bout. That aside, you also have Benny Cutie, who is a just threat to deal with. Again, a lot of you will wonder, why did they pick the Harrod so early? It's because they knew that they were going to barrel on through the early to mid, which will open up the map for Benny Cutie. And again, Sanford is one of those tools that allow for it, and he was going off minute one. On top of that, the X Factor 2, right? There are two engaged tools, the Kadita, the Yu Zong here that got the MVP, yeah. Sanford, shout out again. What an awesome performance by this young prodigy. He's a prodigy, 16 years old, still. I'm so impressed <laughs> by this man, but the X Factor, Yaoi on the Kaja. He finds so many picks, sometimes no one has to initiate. It's just him getting a pick and instantly RQ needs to back away. A lot of these times, it's Skyler who actually gets targeted down. It feels similar to what Vin was doing against CW. Yeah, absolutely. And I gotta say, Sanford well-deserved MVP this game. Not only did we see Yaoi combo with the Kaja, the Sanford and Kadita, right? You're doing Kadita on the bottom side. I think it happened twice in a row, yep. where they just completely picked out R7 and was absolutely beautifully watched. And let's take a look at the heat map right here. Yep, again, this is five to 10 minutes approaching mid-game. And you see how he still stayed in the XP lane is because R7, the relentless one, really just wanted to pressure that turret, because if RQ and Hoshi weren't winning team fights, which at this point, five, ten minutes, they weren't, then they were gonna try to get some of the map. And Sanford read into that and just said, no, you fight me here and I will stay. And if you don't budge, then the rest of your team is gonna suffer. I love it because Sanford is a very team fight, uh, you know, he participates in a lot of team fights previously before this matchup. But then he realized, hey, Beatrix, Skyler, he wants to go for solo farm on the other side of the map, on the weak side of the map to get some trades down as well. He stays there or he just rotates over back to that lane to punish him. And here, this is the highlights we're going to see 
This is what I'm talking about, right? Early on, neutral objective takes. RQ are contesting every single one of them, and they do not respect the kill pressure that Echo has around the XP lane. They gotta respect this, because Echo, look at their compositions. They have a lot of magic. If they get Sanford going, RQ, what are they gonna do, right? If they go for fill physical defense or magical defense, it's not really gonna work. Go ahead. That's the thing, that's the point. Yeah, regarding Sanford though, this Udrome, he's finding so much macro plays, right? Like the bottom lane, getting a pick, go to top side. I found a solo one-on-one -on -one against Skylar, right? This guy is everywhere in the team fight. Uh, I think he has one of the highest team fight participation, 71.3%, the highest it was 76%. I mean, when you have a silent that has one of the highest kill participation, it's a GGWP. Yeah, this is an MVP that is both set up and payoff. He was buying time in the mid game, and then in the late game, just started to dominate. Every single time he went with a Black Dragon form, it was for offense. And 